I had three dreams that changed my life. When HSBC makes the big announcement, we are going to launch Islamic banking. Everybody says, hey, this is the largest bank in the world and they are doing Islamic banking. No, everybody wants to do Islamic banking. Yeah. The next day, so obviously I go to bed, go to sleep, and I find myself in a position of sajda. So I was in a position of sajda. The thing is that I wasn't me willing to be in sajda. There was a force keeping me in that stage. Assalamu alaikum everyone. With me today, I have the illustrious Ruggiero Omar ibn Abdullah Lomonaco. Have I said that right? Lomonaco. Lomonaco. Lomonaco, okay. That, that's less exciting. <laughs> trying to get extra hard. I know, I'm trying extra hard. He's like, no, it's easy. Um, so Ruggiero, you're this figure that everyone knows in Islamic finance. Okay. You, uh, you pop up in all the key places. Uh, you're head of product structuring at Rasmala Investment Bank. Uh, and you're, you head up their real estate fund as well. And we're going to talk about your involvement in the early days of Islamic finance because I'm really fascinated about you know, the evolution and, and how things have gone. Um, and, and also when you moved to Dubai, uh, you know, how you found it and how Dubai has evolved as well. But I want to start first with your story of like, how you came to Islam because uh, I don't think I've ever heard this, so it'll be fascinating. How did you come to Islam? Okay. Uh, so, first of all, I need to uh, uh, explain that this is a story that I kept for me for 10 years because I didn't know whether I could share it. Uh, however, Islamically, you felt you didn't. I, I had, uh, I had uh, doubts about that. So, the question that you asked me was asked to me by the Sharia board of HSBC, Amana, back in 2022, 10 years after. Uh, uh, and uh, the event happened and uh, I asked them, okay, you are three... Fukaha, so you can give me a fatwa. So I will open up on how my conversion happened, and then you need to give me a fatwa here on the spot that uh, I can tell other people the story. And they listened to me, and they said, yes, you can tell uh, the story. So this happened uh, in Rome. We were having a Sharia board meeting there. So you've actually, you've got a fatwa from I have three, a fat you've got the four. Yeah, four. So, Sheikh Taki Usmani. Yeah. Justice Taki Usmani, uh, uh, Sheikh Nizam Yaqubi, yeah. Dr. Muhammad Al Ghari, yeah. and uh, Sheikh Imran uh, uh, Usmani, Dr. Isma, Isma, the, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. the the the, the so son of four Ibn. big heavyweights have signed exactly. off on this on this story. Yes, they signed on this. So this is the story, but this is the, the the short story. It's a little bit longer, but I'll give you a condensed story. So uh, it was in year 1992. Okay. One year after I was born. Very good. So I was 22 years old. Okay, and I was uh, uh, your classic average Italian guy. Okay, I was university, and uh, I had three dreams that changed my life. Okay, one after the other, uh, 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 and the first two dreams were in one night, and the third one was the third uh, in the second night. So the first dream, okay. I just went to sleep and I found myself in Qiyamah, in the Noor of Allah. So I just experienced the Noor. It's a kind of an opaque light like this one that uh, is in front of us. And it was uh, stopping the time. No place, no time. It's just eternal bliss, blessing. So I knew that there were other people around me, but the only thing that mattered was to face this light which was... Uh, which was uh, nourishing us. And I remember my past life, I mean, all the troubles that we have, and it was like a distant memory. And I said, ah, so here in this state, I can understand why I had that experience of a, of a normal life, but this is really true happiness. I mean, anything that was bother, bothering my, 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 my soul, my heart, was completely removed. Just uh, passing memories of my past life. So I woke up in the middle of the night and I said, aha, this is good. <laughs> how do I get to know, I mean, how do I really stay in this light? So, uh, and you knew that this was Allah, Islam? I knew nothing. Okay. I was nothing. I mean, I was, I was agnostic. I wasn't going to church. I was brought up as a Catholic, but I was nothing. I was just living a very, very, very normal life. 
So normal in the sense yeah, for, yeah, yeah. by Western Italian standard. No care at all. I mean, I've made up my mind, God does not exist. That was my position. Okay, we come from uh, this uh, soup, cosmic soup or whatever, yeah. the primordial soup. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And then I went to sleep. And then the opposite happened. I was in darkness. Opposite. So first of all, not longer Kiyama, but upside down. So I had the sensation of being upside down, suspended in no space, no time, but ups I had the sensation of being upside down. And I remember it was so dark. So still no time, no space, but this time the, the, the complete absence of the light. So when I, I remember, I put my hand in front of me and I couldn't even see my hand. Okay. And I said, uh, the sense of desperation. I don't want to stay into this state. Okay, so I pulled up myself out of the dream. I woke up in the mid, uh, in, in early morning, and I really a very like a, a, a depressed. I felt depressed. So the whole day I was kind of thinking and thinking and thinking. I says what is happening here? I says, so, and, 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 and around it there weren't any triggering factors. No, nothing. Nothing. Just in the mid, out of nowhere. Wow. No contact with anybody, Muslim, Christians, nothing. It was just mm. university studying finance. Wow. So the whole day I was thinking about. And uh, the next day, so obviously I go to bed, and that's where actually it came to me. So go to sleep, and I find myself in a position of sajda. So I was in a position of sajda. The thing is that I wasn't me willing to be in sajda. There was a force keeping me in that stage. In front of me, I could see that there was a mountain with a burning tree. Wow. And a voice behind me, and that is the reason why I said I needed to ask a fatwa for saying this. Mm. And the voice behind me said, don't deny my existence. I am more powerful than you. Look at yourself. You cannot even stand up for this position. And when the people ask me, when did you become Muslim? I said, there. Because for what I experienced there mm. was Islam, meaning not peace, some mission. Mm. So when the, the, it was like a, literally a force keeping me down. And of course now, obviously, you st we study, we know about Islam, we know, about, uh, uh, you, we know that when the Allah reveals, uh, 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 manifests to his creatures, uh, the creatures cannot other do than bow to him. Okay. So that was it. Okay. So I woke up in the middle of the night, my heart was uh, pumped. I said, oh my God, because obviously I couldn't, I couldn't stay mm -hmm. for that, yeah, yeah. sleeping in, in that position. Uh, uh, and uh, I said, okay, here we need to take action. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I literally went to a school again of uh, religion. Yeah. I went to, there was a Christian missionary school, uh, Catholics. And then uh, we started from, from scratch. Mm. Okay, guys, let's start from... The, the, what they call the ABC, Torah, yeah, okay, yeah. The, the, the Deuteronomy, the first, first five books, okay. In the beginning, there yeah. was darkness, <laughs> and Allah created the light, yeah. and blah, 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 blah. And then we, we, uh, we arrive at the story of uh, uh, Abraham. And I asked the question to the priest, but how do we know that these things really happen? Okay, so there was this, uh, this, this, uh, still this suspense, okay, and uh, and then the things lasted for years. I mean, uh, I, I was meeting Jehovah Witnesses, you know, these are missionary Christians yeah, that come yeah, and knock yeah, at yeah. the door. Normally people slam the door. I was like, no, come, let's have a discussion here. <laughs> I need to understand <laughs> my experience. They're like, really, are you sure? <laughs> yeah, yeah, come, come. And <laughs> also the same happened a few years ago when I was living here in Stratford, it was like 97. Uh, these uh, uh, cr uh, Christians, uh, these are uh, like, um, Mormons came to my door. Yeah. I says, "Come," <laughs> and we had a very long debate. <laughs> I almost met the Muslims <laughs> <laughs> at the time. I mean, it was very, very engaging the the the, the discussion. Uh, and um, I so three years passed by. Okay, and uh, boom! Fast forward, uh, 1995. Finished my university, and I and you're now what Christian or still searching? Okay, okay. So you, you believe in God. I believe that for sure, for sure, yeah, I said yeah. there is God here. Yeah, yeah. I just now need to find him. Yeah. I need to understand how do I communicate yeah. uh, to him back. Yeah. Okay? So, fast forward, in Italy at the time, after uh, uh, university or after schooling, you needed to do one year of military service. So, I am military service. I have a duty guard. It was about, uh, must have been uh, uh, June, June, July. 
so, uh, no, so, yeah, June, July. Uh, military service, I am in a, uh, I'm doing guard service, okay? And completely boring. I mean, what do you do? Uh, yeah. A military guard in a, in a barrack in the middle of Italy. Uh, uh, so I, my eyes go down on the floor, okay? And I see ants. Ants coming in and out, in and out of a hole with some sticks on their, on their heads. Then sunset comes and all the ants go inside. Few, they put all the sticks and they close the hole. And two ants remain outside of the hole doing the guard. Wow. And I said, ha ha, these ants are behaving exactly like us soldiers. So we have uh, sunset. In mm -hmm. Italy, there is a prayer uh, with the prayer of the marine. Ah, right. Close the doors, and two people and two and the guards remain outside. And I and then it said, these ants could not have learned this by themselves. Now I see that there is an intelligence governing everything. Mm. And at that point, for about uh, half day, I enter into a state of hypnosis where I could see that everything around wow. me was controlled by this intelligence. So I finish my service, I lose my train to go home, I hop on a plane, sorry, on a, on a, on a bus, and uh, I am staring, keep staring at the, at the window. There were mountains, there were lots of leaves, and uh, I look at the leaves, I said, ha ha, this is not the wind. There is a force, there is a unifying force controlling everything. There was a lady mm. next to me, no? And you know, in Italy, we, we are very open uh, and we, we talk to, to ladies. And I said, you know what? Says, well, well, I discovered that God exists. He says, oh, really? <laughs> says, how do you know? Well, you see this mountain, all these leaves. Uh, 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 I can see that there is a force that uh, is uh, moving all these leaves. Uh, and then we start uh, engaging in discussion. I want to convince her that God exists. She says, look, I want to, uh, I have uh, something for you, okay? Uh, but uh, you, you, I don't have it with me right now. Just exchange uh, the, the telephone number, I will bring it to you. So we reach destination, uh, she comes and she gives me this Italian Quran. She was Muslim actually, so oh, I was really? trying to convince her that God exists. I was giving yeah. dawah yeah. to a Muslim. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know these things at the time. So she gives me this, <laughs> this Quran. And I opened the Quran, and it was not the first time that I opened the Quran. I opened it when I was in, uh, in, uh, in high school. But uh, look, oh, this is just middle, this is middle age uh, prose. Yeah, okay? yeah, it's yeah. not really relevant for me, and I closed it. But this time, when I opened it, okay, mm. then I basically got the experience of what that message was for me. Mm. What I recognize in the Quran is that the voice, it, the, 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 the words were this, coming from the same divine entity that had spoken to me. Mm. He was a king talking to me. Mm. It wasn't the, it's like, okay, he's your friend, you can have a chat. Okay, yeah, yeah I seen a lot in life, but uh, come yeah. on, let's have a discussion. Yeah. No, it's a, go it's, a, it's, a, it's a king. Yeah. Okay. And I, that, the Quran just uh, told to me that, I, of course, I, there are some, uh, many things, I mean, you can recognize uh, the, the fact that you put your hands uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the darkness, you know, Surah uh, uh, al, uh, al Baqarah, you know, so, you know, yeah. that, uh, the, what happened to the, to the, yeah. uh, um, uh, the yeah. unbelievers, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the, the Kafirs, that they are, uh, there are, there is a darkness, mm. okay. And uh, then there is a flash of light, and then they, they completely in darkness. So I, I, so I saw Nur ala Nur. Okay, ah, so this was the light. The ants, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The leaves, there is not a single leaf that yeah, moves, yeah, yeah, yeah. that is not, that Allah has no knowledge, okay. The, if you, if you, if you, if all the, 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 the trees of the world were pens and the sea, where ink, even if you had seven, seven inks, they will not be sufficient to write the word of Allah. So I said, ah, you see, the word of Allah are everywhere. Mm. It's not that Allah it, it doesn't speak anymore. Allah speaks to everyone all the time. It's just a question of, do we listen? Mm. That was the question. We don't listen. Yeah. But if you listen, actually you can, of course, uh, 
you need to be in a certain stage to, 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 to see it. Okay? But we are like fish d d swimming in water. Okay? And that's uh, a, 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 a every single atom of this air. Okay? It's actually the, the electrons are all controlled by Allah. So yeah. you're constantly going through this, uh, this uh, power. Okay? The time okay? is controlled by Allah. Okay, yeah. so I, 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 then you start seeing that, okay. Uh, so, uh, so Ruggiero, a uh, couple of questions. How many Muslims are there initially? So there are about 2 million Muslims, mainly migrants. Uh, Italians must be maybe 50,000. Right, uh, 50, 50 million you mean? 50, no, no, 50,000 Muslim, oh, Italian okay. Muslim, maybe. This is okay. some how many, how many in Italy you said? 2 millions, maybe. 2 million, okay, so there's... But mainly migrants. Right, right. Um, and, and you met one of the Italian ones? No, she, w she, w she was from Malaysia. Right. Okay. She was just uh, touring right, right, Malaysia, right. And Italy. You never, you don't, you're not in touch with her anymore. You don't know where she went. No, no. So, wow. So, so uh, but then what, what happened is that uh, on the same uh, day. Yeah. That and how many, sorry, how many people in Italy in total? Uh, must be 56 million. Right. So even like, even that is a quite chance encounter. There's not that many. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. both we lost the train. Yeah. And both we were on this uh, uh, alternative bus. So, yeah, of yeah, course, yeah, uh, yeah. this was, uh, this is uh, uh, destiny. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then it was destiny that when I arrived to Rome, next to my house, they opened the greatest mosque of, uh, oh, really? of, e of Europe. Wow. You know the Mosque of Rome? Have you ever been? No. Oh, you should go there. It's the largest mosque of U uh, Europe, wow. uh, if I understand. So, next to my house. So I, 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 of course, I go and ring at the bell. I say, excuse me, can yeah. I learn about Islam? I say, yeah. okay, fine. And uh, uh, then I says, how do I, do Muslim? how do I become a Muslim? Yeah. At the time, there was not even an official certificate. Okay, yeah. if to say, just say the, 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 the Shahada and you yeah. become Muslim. I said, okay, that's, uh, that's simple. He yeah. says, yes. And then my neighbor in, in Rome was also a Muslim. Right. And so we started going together every, every night. I mean, of my luck, it was uh, yeah. Ramadan, like a month later. Okay, so right. bang, <laughs> I got my... Uh, so we were having, uh, having uh, dinner every night, uh, so, sorry, iftar, uh, uh, at the mosque. And, uh, and that is where you asked the same question, how do I become, uh, knew about uh, uh, Islamic finance? Because yeah. we were having iftar, yeah. and the, my friend asked me, so what do you do? I said, you know, I just graduated a year ago from, uh, uh, in finance. Now I'm finishing in a few months, uh, I will be finishing the military service, and then I will go and work in a bank. He says, oh, do you know about Riba? I says, what's Riba? Hmm. Uh, and then uh, explain. I said, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> what am I going to do? So I, I said, okay, I've studied all my life. I was just pre planning to have a beautiful career in yeah. banking and finance. <laughs> and I know it's, uh, it's forbidden. <laughs> so I, I, I went to the library. They, I mean, yeah. I think that there was internet in 96 yeah. at the time, but it wasn't really. Not very good, yeah. So uh, you really needed to go to a library and yeah, take yeah, books. Yeah. So I, 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 th there is a, an almanac of all the banks in the world. So I, I, I went to all the banks in, in, in the Middle Eastern world. Okay, and uh, I said, okay, let me start sending CVs. Yeah. So <laughs> Dubai Islamic Bank, Kuwait Finance House, yeah, I think yeah. these this were still there. And then, you know, I don't know, Bank of Palestine, I mean, anything yeah, like Arab Banking Corporation. Uh, good morning, I'm a young Muslim, yeah. would yeah. like to have a job. <laughs> <laughs> and it didn't work uh, uh, like that, honestly. Uh, so what I did, uh, I, I took a plane, okay? And first I went to Kuala Lumpur. Right. And exactly the same thing, I took the list of the banks from the yellow yeah. pages, called the HR of every bank. Yeah. Hello, I'm a young Muslim, yeah. uh, would like to learn uh, and work with you. And I got an interview from HSBC right. in Kuala Lumpur. So this lady, uh, said, yeah, look, uh, I need to explain you that uh, it doesn't really work the way you are, you are doing it. Yeah. You cannot just come to Kuala Lumpur as a, a young graduate and apply for yeah, a yeah. job because we typically give these jobs to our uh, Malaysian Lumpen, uh, yeah. young graduates. Uh, but there is a, uh, you need to go to London. Yeah. And London is your window for the world. Mm. Okay, so I came to London. Yeah. Same, I'm going to Bishopsgate up and down, giving my curriculum to the, to the, yeah, to the normal banks. I needed right, a job. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? 
And, uh, you know, I don't know, at the time, at the, at the outside the tube station, there were these guys with a magazine yeah. with all the, the jobs ah. uh, advertised, okay? Because London was booming at the time. Mm. And uh, uh, I found a job with a, a man called Chase Manhattan Bank yeah. okay? uh, in Bournemouth. So uh, uh, at the time, even if you don't speak English, they give you a job. Okay. <laughs> in Bournemouth? In Bournemouth. In Bournemouth. Uh, Chase Manhattan Bank uh, had just acquired a bank called Chemical Bank. I see. Who had okay. an office, uh, back office right, and right, middle right. office there. Beautiful. In the middle of a, a golf course. It's still there, by the way. Ah, but now it's JP Morgan. Right. And uh, then a couple of months there of experience, and then I moved to the city in Stratford. Ah. Why? Because I got a job with JP Morgan. Right. JP Morgan had a, an office in Stratford, the shopping center, the old one. Yeah. Called Morgan Guarantee, uh, the office was called Morgan Guarantee Trust. Right. So I came to live here in uh, 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 Maryland Station. My office, my 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 first uh, uh, flat was overlooking Maryland Station, which is like at three o'clock in the night. There was some diesel train. It was like going to your corridor. <laughs> anyway, that's where I started. <laughs> but what I did, uh, is <laughs> you oh, get used yeah. to it. You get used <laughs> to the diesel train. And uh, uh, but what I was doing, sa the, every Saturday and Sunday, I was locking myself in a, in a library of, uh, in Holland Park, which is, uh, there was this gentleman, uh, his name is Milani, Milani. He, he was like a universal Islamic, something like that. He had a huge uh, uh, library of Islamic books. Right. Huge, okay. So, uh, Islamic finance books. Right. Okay. So, I was actually st st staying the whole weekend for years. Wow. For two, for like maybe for two years, 96, 97, 98, yeah, for two, all, two years. Every single weekend, just studying Islamic finance. And he was happy for you to do that? Yeah, it was. A, it is. An, I think it's still there. I mean, it's an open library. Oh, it's an open library. Okay. Right. I mean, open for. Uh, I mean, Muslim, Muslim scholars. Yeah, okay, but right. he's accumulated a huge library, and and then I read uh, even at Regent's Park there were a lot of these books. Uh, uh, they were published yeah, yeah. by by Umar Chapra and uh, all the founders, like uh, the the theory the theory yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, of uh, of Islamic finance. So I was doing that, and then I meet. I mean, I, I I see one day two two guys. One was a, a friend like Farid School. Okay, and then it was just uh, this uh, this gentleman from uh, um, uh, from Iran. He was a scholar, and they were talking about Islamic finance. So I said, "Can I please join you and uh, and listen to yeah. what you are doing?" So Farid was the legal advisor of the Islamic Institute of Banking and Insurance. Right. I don't know whether it's still there, and so we got we become uh, uh, friends. And uh, uh, a couple of months later, Farid calls me and says, you know, there is a gentleman called Iqbal Khan. He just came yeah. to our institute and he's looking for young Muslim professionals working in, uh, in, in, in investment banking because he's establishing a global Islamic finance division for HSBC. Yeah. So at the time I already kind of moved my way from the back office all the way to the uh, treasury of JP Morgan. So in fact, I was not working anymore here. I was put on the graduate training program right. uh, in um, embankment, Victorian right, right, right. Uh, embankment, the old school building. So I was there on the trading floor, very scary environment, like like thousand traders show, still the transition from electronic trading to yeah. to to, uh, to open cry was still uh, not completed. So the traders, even if they were in front of a computer, they were not using phones, they were shouting at each other yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the in the on the trading floor. But anyway, I was slowly growing and learning a lot about, you know, derivatives. Uh, so I, I, I wrote my letter to Iqbal. I said, there, Mr. Khan, uh, I am studying Islamic finance, but I also know a lot about uh, yeah. derivatives. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. Uh, I, pr I think I can, uh, I, I can be of, uh, of assistance yeah. to you. And uh, he gave me an interview. Uh, he then told me that he prayed his tihara. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> and he offered me a job. So this is how I, I, I ended up in, uh, in Islamic finance. That's a, that is a long and interesting yeah. and tough, tough journey. Yes. You have to really try. You yes. tried in the Middle East, tried in Malaysia, yes. and then you tried in London, 
Yes. And then finally, alhamdulillah, you got absolutely, there. Absolutely. So, so what, what was Islamic finance like in the early days and what did, what, what did you get involved in? So, I arrived with the expectation that Islamic finance was the exact opposite of conventional banking. So, yeah. when you actually go from the theoretical books, yeah. you can say, okay, this is interest and this is banking, yeah. normal banking. An Islamic bank operates a profit and loss sharing model. Yeah. So it, it, it takes money from, the, from its clients, it provides the, the money to corporates and they share the, the profit and losses of the company and they, they take a, a portion, okay, and then they give it to their clients. So that was basically the model that had been uh, theorized yeah. by, by uh, 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 these early pioneers uh, of Islamic finance. So, at the time, uh, uh, Iqbal came and says, okay, the finance minister of Qatar has arrived. He would like to, uh, f to arrange financing for uh, the new airport of uh, Doha. Can you please prepare uh, a structuring proposal? So I took my, my books and I says, okay, I don't know whether they offer alcohol, but anyway, it can be structured this way. The Islamic investors uh, build and uh, uh, operate the... the, the um, uh, they build, they operate the, 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 the terminal, okay, there will be shops, they will collect the rent, uh, and, uh, 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 and then they will share on the, on the fees that the airport is charging to the, to the, to the airlines. Uh, Iqbal said, Ruggiero, okay, this is the theory, okay, the practice is that we have tried this, <laughs> okay, and the money had wings. <laughs> so, he says, what happened is that we started this way, Islamic yeah. finance, because obviously it was, it was like probably maybe 10 years before me. And right, right, right. So we have been going to, to, to a businessman and we have provided the money on this basis. Yeah. And they were also borrowing from conventional banks. Yeah. Then what happened is that they gave the money back to the conventional banks. Yeah. Okay, and they never gave us the money back. Right. Okay. okay so we actually lost money. So we have uh, to implement alternative uh, modes of finance to what you are reading in the books. Okay. One being the murabaha, yeah. and one is being the ijara, but with a with a with a promise that they will buy back right, right, right. the asset. And then I, I remember that there was a, a colleague of mine that they joined from uh, another uh, bank, and he came and he was given the job of uh, establishing a product to deal with other Islamic banks because other Islamic banks wanted to have a relationships with banks in London, but they interbank, but yeah. they couldn't just uh, uh, deposit uh, their money, yeah, okay, yeah. to a normal money market deposit. So this, this uh, uh, a colleague showed me a triangular uh, transaction where the Islamic bank was buying uh, commodities and then selling those commodities to the bank. And then it's okay, what do we do with the commodities? Yeah. Okay. And then the bank was selling back those commodities to the yeah, market. Yeah, yeah. So I said, oh my God, so this is Islamic banking. Okay, fine. So we talked to the scholars and we said, but uh, what do you think of, of, uh, of this way of doing Islamic banking? And uh, they said, uh, well, you know, we need to start somewhere. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there is a halal way of dealing in mo uh, with money and uh, there is a haram way, okay? So this might not be the ideal uh, mm. uh, way of dealing with money, but something we need to do. Yeah. And they were right in a way. Why they were right? Because if we had continued to do that, uh, to, to try to insist, okay, we would not have gone anywhere. Mm. You see, in order to operate a bank account, okay, you need to have a, a banking license. Yeah. And if you want a banking license, you have to put yourself under the supervision of a central bank. Yeah. A central bank has a mindset of how the bank should operate. Yeah. Because people that were not operating banks, uh, I don't know, 100 years ago, 20 years ago, they basically ended up bankrupting yeah. the bank the and country. then uh, losing the money yeah. of their uh, depositors. So there is a very clear uh, uh, w way of uh, operating a bank. So if you want to be an Islamic bank, you yeah. need to sacrifice all your theory yeah. of how an Islamic bank should operate, yeah. and uh, it should be that way. I'm talking here about 96, 98, yeah. 98, okay? We're talking before pre-fintech, mm -hmm. okay? 
uh, and the, the bulk of the financial intermediation was going still through banks. I mean, in the US, they were using more the bond market, but uh, in Europe, it's been always been intermediated by, by banks. So if you want to access the money of a bank, you need to operate in a certain way. Or better, if, the, if a group of Muslims want to collect money from the general public and giving it to corporates, they need to subject themselves to the supervision of the central bank. Okay? So that is some, that we had to start somewhere. Fast forward uh, 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 to 2000 and we, which year we are? 2023. Okay? Mm -hmm. Everybody's talking about Islamic banking, Islamic finance. Okay, so they were right that if you wanted to make it mainstream, you needed to make that initial, uh, uh, if you want, uh, structural adjustment. At that time, if you were going to Saudi Arabia, UAE, and you were talking to anyone, okay, what about Islamic banking? They says, ah, it's just a fringe market, like Saudi Arabia, completely conventional banking. When HSBC, makes the big announcement, we are going to launch Islamic banking. Everybody says, hey, this is the largest bank in the world and they are doing Islamic banking. No, everybody wants to do Islamic banking. Yeah, yeah. So uh, 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 everyone, either they open an Islamic window or all the Islam, because it's like, I mean, the biggest bank in the world is coming to yeah, Dallas. Yeah. So the, 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 the Muslims, the Arabs, uh, they they could not, uh, they didn't believe that this thing could be done. When the, the uh, 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 HSBC says, yes, it can be done, says, oh, if HSBC says it can be done, <laughs> everybody jumped on the, on the bandwagon. Yeah. So, we, so are you saying that we have a lot to owe to non-Muslims as part yes. of? Yes. John Bond. Sir John Bond. Mm. Sir John Bond was the, 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 the chairman of uh, HSBC group. And he was uh, on a mission to create uh, your local global bank. Mm. So he was going in every country where HSBC had a presence and asking their clients, how do you want to do banking? You are Chinese, I'll give you Chinese banking, full Chinese customer service. You don't have to learn English to talk to your bank. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. You, they, they just bought Midland Bank. Yeah. In, in the UA. They, they came and they had the Saudi British Bank, they had HSBC. So they were going to the Muslim world and the Muslim world, the Muslim clients were saying, we want Islamic banking. Mm. So he said, I want to look in the eyes of my clients mm. and I says, I want to really give you what you want. Okay. And he found Iqbal Khan. They were so good friends. So you cannot believe it. Okay. Mm. So we really owe it to Sir John Bond. Okay. Mm. That this, uh, this, uh, uh, this change. Wow. He's still alive? Yeah, then, oh, I think so, I hope so. Yeah. Uh, uh, he then left HSBC in 2006 and he became the chairman of Vodafone, if right, I'm not right, mistaken. Right, right, right. I don't know today uh, what, uh, what he's doing. So, uh, it was a pure uh, um, uh, business approach. I, mean, I want to just bank in yeah. the Muslim world. I'm so, yeah. I have a big footprint, Malaysia, yeah. uh, Indonesia. Uh, the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, okay? Yeah. My, the, 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 the grassroots yeah. is telling me they want Islamic banking and I want to give it. He didn't and have a clue on yeah. what it is, Islamic bank. And that's where the whole, th that's where the big kind of boom for Islamic finance started. Exactly, because, because everybody says, no, then I want to uh, establish Abu Dhabi Islamic bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want to establish Nur Bank. Emirates, and that, or whatever, yeah. Now, we sent our team to Saudi Arabia. Right. Okay. This was uh, under my colleague, uh, uh, Razi, Razi Faki. Right. A very hostile environment within, uh, within the bank. Okay? Islamic banking in Saudi Arabia, nobody wants to do Islamic banking. Okay? So Razi said, uh, give me a chance of putting my Islamic products in the branches. Within a few months, 90% of all new products were Islamic. Wow. Within a, I don't know, a year or two years, the whole of the retail banking yeah. of Saudi British Bank was Sharia compliant. Wow. And at that point, the, 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 I mean, everybody had to take notice. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So you started getting new Islamic bank popping up. Yeah. Araji Bank was always there. Okay. They were not allowed. Yeah. 
to be called Islamic banks. Oh, really? Okay. The, uh, National Commercial Bank was already running some Islamic funds, but they couldn't put the name Islamic. Ah, they were right. called the trading, Global Equity Trading Fund. I see. Okay? But people knew the trading was a Islamic. code name yeah. for Islamic. <laughs> okay. so, so, but you couldn't call it Islamic banking. Okay, interesting. It was Kuwait Finance House. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, uh, so so this was really when uh, it uh, started uh, uh, spreading uh, uh, everywhere, uh, and it be the, the the process became uh, uh, unstoppable. So those uh, like uh, ten years uh, were really uh, massive uh, 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 exponential growth mm. of uh, of the business. And so, and what was the next turning point for the industry? I think that the we to just before the financial the great financial crisis okay the 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 conventional bankers kind of took over islamic bank. lots of people converted to islamic banking right lots of people that were muslim working yeah. conventional banking only because because they had a, a, a arabic sounding name yeah they suddenly became uh, uh, expert of uh, Islamic finance, yeah. but they didn't have a clue yeah. of what was the original direction that we yeah. were trying to do. Yeah. It's profit and loss sharing, yeah. okay, an alternative to the interest-based uh, yeah. uh, uh, system. Yeah. I mean, I came up with an idea, which, by the way, was good back in '98, because my job was always come up with new ideas. Yeah. I said, okay, why don't we actually get away completely from dollars? Right. We take, we buy all the gold that we can possibly buy. We have a cavo under Mecca, under the Haram in Mecca, yeah. and we'll have all the Islamic banks linking their <laughs> reserves. I like it. To I like it. The, will be the Fort Knox uh, yeah. under uh, the Kaaba. At the time, uh, if you look at the price of gold where it was yeah. uh, in '98, and look where it is now. Yeah. It, it, uh, the Islamic banking would have been 10 times <laughs> what it is not, <laughs> just because the, the gold. How much, I should have just listened to you. Uh, 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 sometimes even I should listen to my advice. <laughs> uh, uh, so it, it's, these Islamic bankers that came uh, to the, uh, that came to the, uh, sorry, these bankers that came to Islamic banking, they just knew about conventional banking. Mm. So they found uh, a platform which was a kind of a replica of conventional banking, just with Islamic contracts. Mm. Okay, and they said, okay, then I can do it. Then I can give you an Islamic credit card. Yeah. So you borrow, you go and spend it, and then yeah, we'll do some yeah, commodity yeah. transaction, which transform your credit yeah. into a loan. Yeah, okay, yeah. so it was going further and further and further away, but it's just lost that momentum. And then the, the peak, the turning point, as you were saying, is when <laughs> a, a local Islamic bank partner with a, a global Wall Street investment bank yeah. to issue a capi Islamic capital protected product on a basket of hedge funds. Yeah. Okay, at that point, I think, guys, I think we are... <laughs> we have and hedge funds are, of course, you know, hedge not permissible. Not permissible. Yeah, short selling, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, derivatives so, of everything. So... Um, uh, at that point, uh, 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 people had to go to the scholar and I said, okay, I think that this is now the time that uh, we need to, to turn. Now, what has happened over all these years, yeah. okay, is that, I mean, two things have emerged. I mean, have really been, one, the asset management and the private equity industry really became mainstream, mm. okay? So that model of uh, profit sharing, people realized that, okay, sorry, I don't need to go to a bank to get my financing. I can go to a private equity fund. And they can do that, yeah. So you, there you are. You have the 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 the, private, the, the AUM of the asset management industry skyrocketed. Yeah. Okay. So now you don't have any more to go to a bank, which is constrained by the central bank to give you money only in a certain way. Yeah. You can indeed do profit and loss sharing. Yeah. Then there is a real estate funds. Yeah. Okay. So you can actually you, you need to finance yeah. your your business. You have actually a real estate. Well. Don't buy with a loan, just lease it. Yeah. Okay. A, a, and then fintech. Mm. Okay. So it's, you see, today, if you have a brokerage account, okay, the broker, and you hold uh, in your, you can have like, say, halal stocks. Yeah. Or a little bit of gold 
and uh, I got a fatwa at the time from the scholars uh, that uh, uh, you know gold bullion securities is listed. I think it's still listed on the London Stock yeah, Exchange. Yeah, yeah. HSBC is actually the custodian of the gold. So I make sure I went there with the scholars. I mean, you know, there's this big, there was this big cavo under, po uh, and I says, is this allocated gold or non allocated gold? No, it's allocated, meaning that there is a there is a pile of gold that says this pile of gold belongs to this entity. Right. So the scholar said, okay, this is Sharia compliant. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. So you are not. It's not paper gold. It's real gold. So you have all these securities in your account. Okay. Now the brokers can issue a debit card. Yeah. There you are. Now your, your debit card is no longer issued by a bank and your money is no longer used to provide loans. Mm. So you're, you, you can withdraw from your brokerage account. Yeah, yeah. So why is it possible? Because now there is a so like fintech yeah. can, enter, can access the payment system yeah. without necessarily having a full banking license. Yeah, yeah. As long as you have like a MasterCard and Visa card yeah, circuit, yeah. you can use your money. Now, of yeah. course, your, your bank balance will keep uh, fluctuating. Going up and down, okay? yeah. But uh, I mean, at the end of the day, you're not going to keep your money all in, uh, in deposits cash and in yeah, cash. Yeah, 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 okay? yeah. So you, you can, uh, y y y now at least as a, as a, you, you can use this, uh, 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 this account. So as m the more and more money goes to fintechs, okay? Mm. Fintechs uh, can be plugged into the stock market. Yeah. In the stock market, you can have Sharia compliant uh, stocks. Uh, even uh, you can create a Sharia compliant REIT. Mm. Okay, it's listed on the stock market. You own properties. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you are. The, the is Islamic finance uh, 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 system can bypass yeah. to a great extent yeah. the commercial bank. Yeah. And we have been given for like 20 years this beautiful gift that uh, the whole world was in Islamic finance with the zero interest rate policy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can even buy a bond of, uh, issued by the German government bond. If it's zero percent, you can buy, no? Wow. Think about it. Yeah. If I lend you money at zero percent, yeah. zero, zero. That's okay? just a card of Hassan. Yeah. So I can give a card of Hassan. For 10 years, we have been able to give a card of Hassan to the German government, <laughs> the Japanese government. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So for these 10 years, that the, the world has basically been forced to be at zero interest rates. Yeah. Essentially, it has given the opportunity to the alternative, to the asset management industry yeah. to develop. Yeah. Which means that today, a VC, a, a company is no longer limited mm. to the banks. Yeah. There is a capital market right, right now. Definitely. So they can issue, they can go to the VC network, private equity network, and then one day they can go to the stock market, and through the stock market they can, con they can reach directly all the in retail investors owning a brokerage account. Yeah. So Ruggiero, I want, to, um, I, I want to dive into how we you know, what are the issues currently you see in Islamic finance and how can we fix them? So, the... Because you said, Sir, Sir John Bond, or J John Bond, right? He, he's, he helped, a non-Muslim helped set up Islamic finance and the boom. And then the not so practicing Muslims caused confusion. Yes. And then we had a bit of a crunch. And then things have kind of stabilized and like slowly creeping up again. But what are the issues that take us on to our next, you know, big kind of okay. progressive? The key issue that we need to address, okay, is the ethical behavior. So is the is the adopt, okay, the, the way that the Islamic banks are operating. Mm. Okay? Right now, the banks are operating entirely on a commercial mindset mm. and that doesn't help yeah. okay because muslim clients have a certain expectation yeah. from an islamic bank in terms of service and in terms of uh, behavior of the bank when things go bad mm. because if the bank keeps giving loans mm. okay inevitably there will be times crisis okay where you you will be able we, you will have to deal with the repayment now how is the bank behaving okay yeah. for example in the financial crisis in dubai half of the people in jail okay were borrowers from banks wow 
who had uh, uh, basically given a check as a guarantee and uh, the check obviously bounced and they were put in jail because uh, their bounced check is st was still a criminal right, offense okay so the, the how the the banks uh, 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 behave i mean l lending okay ca it cannot be a commercial activity mm. Lending should be, I mean, in the concept of an Islamic finan finance, uh, lending is something almost like a, a favor, like a, that you do to your counterparty. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, you're doing business, you don't have the money, don't want I'll give you a little bit of a delay. But it's never, should never have become a, a way of, uh, of uh, making money. Mm. So that's the reason why I'm not particularly keen in, the, in this private lending uh, Okay, mm. a, a, a route that is, is emerging even within the, the fintech. Okay. The buy now, pay later. Exactly. Yeah. So in general, it is a good practice not to borrow money. Yeah. Okay. So we need to really redirect completely this idea of uh, taking this huge uh, financial commitments. They are not yeah. good for your for your uh, health. They are not good for your personal. Uh, Finance, they are no good for your company, okay? And we need to re redirect the system. VCs understand this very well. There is, because anyway, people will not lend the money, okay? The businesses, okay, don't understand it well, but now that the interest rates and the cost of finance, okay, it's high, I think people will <laughs> reconsider. I'm sure they really borrow, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, borrow, yeah, yeah. borrow money. And then we have a financial crisis People lose their job and their houses are repossessed. I said, um, maybe it was better if I rent it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we, we need to we need to address this uh, this point now. Brilliant, Ruggiero. I would love to spend another hour, possibly two hours, going through all of the all of all of this and more. And we we've, we've not even got to you know UAE. We've not even got to you know getting your insights about the future, tips on investing. Although okay. I think your tips on investing big and getting big money is pretty simple anyway, right? Yes, uh, just uh, pray <laughs> and uh, w uh, wait for your uh, risk to reach, uh, Allah to reach you. Allahu Akbar. But um, Rigiero, Jazakallah uh, khair for all of this insight. I mean, I, yeah, absolutely fascinating. Whenever I speak to you, I learn so much. Um, and uh, we're blessed to have you in the, you know, with us, but also in the Islamic finance industry as a partner with us on the, you know, on the Curate Capital platform. And uh, inshallah, we'll, we'll have to do a part two. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, everyone.